Well, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with my Yaesu FTM 200, as I often am. If you're unfamiliar with this radio, it is a dual band VHF UHF 50 watt transceiver from Yaesu. Uh, those of you who are familiar will recognize the screen. This is the main display. We're seeing both channels A and B. Um, the lower one is set to APRS and APRS is turned on. And I want to point out to you something that's a little different than uh, other videos that I've had. Uh, uh, if you look carefully at the bottom here, you're going to see an icon that indicates we've received a message. So I've been working on APRS. So I want to show you using just the FTM 200, as you see here, no extra equipment, how I was able to make a contact, a text, message and get a response. So we're going to go to item 101 in the menu where you'll find your messages list. Note the icon showing the on-read message. We're seeing it down here at item number four. Today I'll walk through the procedure I use to send and receive an APRS message. To follow along, I recommend downloading the APRS manual from Yesu's site. The standard FDM manual that you get in the box doesn't provide detailed APRS instructions. On the FTM 200's product page, look for the Files tab, which you'll see at the top of the page, and scroll to the bottom where you'll find the correct PDF. The instructions for sending an APRS message do not start until page 35. There's a lot of good information that comes before it that will help you understand all the things that you'll see from APRS beacons, but today we're just going to talk about how to send a message. I got my start sending messages with a friendly station who replied to one of my beacons. And I thought to myself, wow, that's cool. And when I went to send a reply, I had no real idea how to do it. So we're going to go into our messages view and we're going to open the message that has not been read yet. And you'll see here, I got a message that says, same to you. And that was in response to me sending out a, have a great weekend. So let's back up here one step. And we're gonna go to item 100 in the list, station list. And we're going to look at how to send a message either in reply to a message sent to you or initiating a contact with a beacon. Selecting a beacon from the list by pushing the dial knob brings up more information about that beacon. So then you can see here that N9MEC is in a fixed location, 6.7 miles from where I'm located. And you can see, um, longitude and latitude there and then below we see a comment and of course we have uh, icon here graphic and the blue dot represents where relative to where i am the other station is that's really quite simple but it does give us some basic inf information and when i got my first uh, message and let's go back here let's see if i can go down and get it right here um, so I got this message saying, hello, you appear to have a fairly new license. Welcome to the hobby. And that was super cool. And then I was like, okay, what do I do now? And the hidden option here is to push the F menu button. And that brings up all these options that, you know, give us a means of handling either a message or initiating something from your beacon list. So in this case, you could hit reply. It isn't easy to discover that the F menu functions as an option button in this context, but that's exactly what happens when initiating or when interacting with a message. And let's go back here. We're gonna go, let's assume that we're gonna go from a beacon from our list. Let's see here, call signs without a dash SSID, which you'll see some of them do have them, one or a seven or 14. All those indicate some information about the station. If you're in a, uh, a fixed location with your FTM 200 or whatever radio you're using, 
no SSID is uh, an appropriate choice. And there's lists of these out there, so you can go and find them and, and figure out what they mean, and it'll help you understand. Here's one with the Dash 09. So if we clicked on that, this happened the other day. But again, we have a very similar presentation, just a little different because different type of station here. And we would hit the um, menu button, and we can hit reply. And that brings up the next problem. It was presented with this uh, screen with lines of dots, and where's the keyboard here? Um, I can see an option below that says one followed by the word hello, but there's no real obvious way to, you know, by turning this dial, nothing seems to be happening. So the trick here is to once again hit the F menu button and select edit text. And that brings us to the place where we can actually input letters. And you would do that by using the dial button and clicking when you have a letter that you want to use. And let's say we did not want that B. You can go down here and remove it. And as you can imagine, this could take a little while if you know we have something lengthy that we'd want to say. Uh, but that's not the only option here. Uh, because that's a fairly slow way to do it, it'd be hard to imagine doing that that often. Um, so here's another little trick. And you're going to want to take advantage of this MTXT button here. And I've got some pre-programmed messages that I put in. And let's just throw in hello because that's nice and original. So we're going to hit the dial button there and, it, and again like this is the a confusing little piece here like okay I, I selected the message that I wanted but where did it go so we're going to hold the dial button once more and that returns us kind of to the main message window and there it is so it can be easy to to select it over and over wondering where in the world it went and do different things um, but if you do that you'll you'll see you know all the attempts that you have in taken to insert your pre program messages they'll just you know be cluttered through that area so that's super cool that we can have pre program messages um, and the trick in that instance is to go to item number 72 on the list and here you can see the pre program messages that I've entered so far and there are still some blanks so you could come along and create some additional messages, you know, whatever you think would be appropriate for kind of a day-to-day -day use. So we're going to go back to our station list. And I'm going to pick from my list here. I'll go down to the one we were trying before, and we'll hit reply. And we're going to go edit text, go to M text, and we'll go to hello. And we're going to hold the button, go back to that. And now we are at the next step, which is again use the menu button, which functions as uh, a context. A uh, way to bring up the context in this particular portion of the radio, and we're going to go down to M text, which will then send that out. And notice you, we just saw that go out. From here, you'll want to go back to the menu, go to message list, and we can see number one there, N0MAZ-9. One attempt has been made. You notice that that is the first item in our list indicated by the one followed by a four. That does not mean 14. The four is its own indicator. Um, the radio will make five attempts to contact the station you've selected to, to send a message to. Notice there it just went to the three. So we have three more attempts. And um, I've done this a few times. You can see here just playing around. Uh, and notice down here, item number six 
has a star next to it. So I sent a message to N0KFB and I got an acknowledgement of the message, which is indicated by the star. And of course above there was a message received um, that's changed from the icon we saw earlier, which tells us that we've looked at that particular message. So there we go. Let's look up the list and see where we're at. It does take a little while um, for, I don't know offhand what the timer is for each attempt, but we haven't gotten past three at this point. But either way, that's how you can send messages. There we go. I, uh, attempt number three has happened. And you can send messages with no extra equipment. Just a little bit of patience and some preparing with pre-programmed responses will make your life a little bit easier if you're going to go this route. And I hope you found this useful. And if you have, leave me a like. And drop a comment below if you have additional tips or thoughts on what you've seen. And I hope you'll come back for a future video. Thank you. Until next time.